Iran's bid to ban pet ownership. Okay, look at this sad little beagle in the so thumbnail. Oh he's so God. sad. <laughs> oh, he's so sad. The saddest so dog. Sad. Oh. <laughs> On November 9th, Iran's parliament confirmed that they received a bill that criminalizes owning pets, especially animals deemed unclean by Islamic law. The bill aims to expand the Islamic Penal Code to ban the importation, sale, and keeping of various animals. The, quote, Bill for the Protection of Public Rights Against Harmful and Dangerous Animals was uh, claims that, quote, walking and playing with animals such as dogs and monkeys outdoor are harmful to the health and peace of other people, monkeys. especially kids and women, and that such acts are against Islamic culture. It lists dogs, rabbits, and turtles as wild, unconventional, harmful, and dangerous, included in the same category as snakes and crocodiles. Iran's religious morality police have previously cracked down on dog and pet owners. Some conservative hardliners in Iran also view pet ownership, quote, as a cultural invasion. Amazing. Amazing. Uh, um, crocodiles? They, they they put just, dogs and like um, bunnies and, in the same category of dangerous as snakes and crocodiles. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. Um, yeah, good job, Islamic Republic of Iran. Like, there's a crocodile pet ownership epidemic happening in Iran. You know, good. Good thing you stopped it, I guess. Actually, what... an article I read about this whole issue talked about how there, there there was a government body that actually basically approved illegal crocodile importation so that they could be skinned and their skin would be sold, which I'm pretty sure is like illegal internationally. Mm. Um, Wait, read what Ghost Bunny is saying. <laughs> Ghost Bunny is saying. But what if I want what if I want to be a pet? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, is that haram? I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, um, this, this made me sad. Like there's so many cute pets and people just like how many people their dog like vastly improves their quality of life? millions yeah, no of people across the world especially people who can't have children or don't want to have children having domesticated animals is a replacement for that and there are studies on how this can really benefit people and help their mental health i mean um at least where i live like emotional support animals are everywhere um the idea i mean i want you to talk about this whole thing of like um well first of all when they said that walking and playing with animals such as dogs and monkeys outdoors is harmful, I, Armin, okay, please help me out here. Do people walk around with monkeys in Iran? Like, do a lot of people have, like, is this a thing? I mean, I lived there for 20 years. I've never saw a single person with a monkey. So I don't know if that's, a, I don't know if my personal experience is anything to go by. I have never met a single person with a monkey. <laughs> The way that, that it was phrased in the same sentence, like walking a dog and monkeys is harmful. I'm like, are people walking around like, with, with monkeys, monkeys on leashes? <laughs> like that I'm not aware. It like it very well could be a thing. I don't know. Mm. Well, okay, so I I was supposed to prepare. Susanna put me on a mission and I failed. Uh, because oh. I showed her a video of this Chaduri woman in Iran, in Iran uh, with a dog, like Chaduri woman, like very religious, conservative hijab. And she was walking her dog. And these religious people came up to her and they were like, this is bad. This is un-Islamic. You shouldn't be having a dog. And she was like going at them. And she's like, you you are the people who ruined our country. You are, like, you are the people who keep, keep telling us we can't do this. We can't do that. Like, go mind your own business. And she was, like, holding her ground so strong. And I was like, wow, this is actually a religious person with a, with a dog. And she's, like, fighting other religious people who are telling her that this haram to have a dog. Okay? So, and she, she was, like. I feel like, if I remember correctly, yeah. she even says, I might be misremembering, but something about, like, how Islam, like, sucks the fun out of everything. Yeah. Like, I was like. Yeah. And maybe, I was like, whoa. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she meant, like, she said Islam sucks the fun out of everything. 
but maybe she was like talking about their version of Islam because she was extremely Islamic herself. And does I don't know how things work. I left there for I don't know how people have just so many contradictory beliefs there. However, if you are wondering, if you're wondering if all of these anti-dog attitude in Iran is just the Islamic Republic of Iran and not Islam. Okay, whether this is is Islam itself anti-dog or is this just like a misinterpretation of just some really conservative religious Muslims? Okay, well, as I, I failed to find that video, I was looking for it for that from that Chaudhuri lady to find the, to show it to you. However, I found something. Um, I was successful at immediately finding this. Okay. Ooh. This is this is one of the many many. Can let me make this talk. This is like let's hurting bring it my back eye. to the source. Let's get into that sunnah. L yeah. Let's. Yes. There we go. Actually, no. This the background is weird. I'm yeah, just gonna put better. it right. Yeah. This is Sahih Muslim. Okay. So this is the um, Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim are the most authentic sources of hadith in islam okay it doesn't get any more when it comes to um, islamic scripture in the hadith category it doesn't get more authentic than this right if this is not islamic then nothing is other than the quran is islamic okay which is basically the source of 95 percent of what is islam comes from hadith okay so this is and again this is on sunnah.com this is not like an an, an anti-islamic source this is the main website for islamic hadith and if you don't believe that this is part of islamic hadith go pick up a sahih muslim and find this it's there okay or look up any other sources of islamic hadith it's there and there's many other versions of the same hadith there okay so this is, says allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa which means muhammad this whole thing just basically means muhammad uh, so it says muhammad ordered us to kill dogs Muhammad really didn't like dogs, okay? Uh, and we carried out this order so much so that we also killed the dog uh, coming with a woman from the desert. <laughs> like, we, we went out of our way to just kill every single dog that we could find. Like, we just Damn. saw, like, woman, like, yeah, like, you're like, we saw a woman with her dog just coming. I'm like, yep, we have to kill a dog. You're like, what? Like, yep, we're killing your dog. So we went She survived the desert to be rewarded with you shooting her dog. <laughs> Not yes, shooting, yes. killing. Yeah, and then so Allah's messenger, Allah's apostle, sallallahu alayhi wa or otherwise known as Muhammad, I just put on myself. Um, for I forbade the killing. They were like, we were just killing so many dogs left and right. The Muhammad were like, okay, chill, uh, stop it. We you killed you. You're killing so many dogs. You're just like going like crazy with this. Stop it, okay? Uh, so the prophet, um. Muhammad basically said, it is your duty, what? It, it is your duty, the jet black dog having two spots on the eyes for it is the devil. Wait, so I think what he's saying um, is that from now on, just kill this kind of dog because that dog yeah. is the devil. Yeah, you know, it's specifically black dogs that are became the big problem. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of other hadith that um, is similar to this. Oh, the other ones are authentic as well. This is this is the first one that showed up, but there are other ones that specifically Muhammad keeps telling people to kill the dogs, and they kill because he he doesn't like the dogs. And some people are like, "But this, we need this one. These are guard dogs." Um, and he then he he goes like, "Okay, kill the black dogs." Because they're, they're they be the devil, they be the devil. Okay, um, this is very interesting because a lot of ex Muslims, well, not a lot of it, some ex Muslims who leave Islam when they go get dogs, they specifically go get the blackest of black dogs because it was specifically the kind of dog <laughs> that, Ma that Muhammad hated the most, right? And they're like, Look at this cute little thing, how could it be evil? Um, wait, let me bring up this and put down. Yeah. Um, Wait, I have right, a question though. Like they were saying yeah. that the pet ownership is a it's it's a cultural invasion that it's like against Islamic values, but including like bunnies, like is what is the foundation for this claim? There is no fat. Okay, so with bunnies, you're just not supposed to eat them. It's you know so. 
um, I mean, it's a kind of a pro bunny situation. Where is that? Where is our bunny in the live chat? Right. I think they're just trying to be. I, I don't know why they're like. They, okay, when they they're mentioning all these other animals, okay, but it's about dogs. This is not about the other animals. Um, most people just want dogs as pets, and they're they just. I think they're just doing this for the sake of like acting like they're being consistent or anything. They have they don't have issues with any other animal um, other than dogs. They they don't they don't care. They don't care if you have cats. They don't care if you have bunnies. They don't. I honestly I don't think they even care if you have crocodiles, right? Um, but they <laughs> dog ownership is just raising in Iran. People just loving their dogs, um, and they were like, "This is un-Islamic. They want to stop it." They act like they're going after pet ownership, but they're actually going after dogs. That's what's happening. Okay. Um, oh, poor oh, ghost bunny. Just... <laughs> Armin, I'm <laughs> sad. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but uh, I mean, okay. Um, some people are asking, like, what about cats and stuff? Islam is actually pro cats, mm -hmm. um, especially because the, sec the second main source of hadith in Islam is Abu Huraira. Susanna, do you know what Abu Huraira means? It, it, that means like a, something about cats, right? It, it's a father of cats. It's a cat Hell father. Yeah. Okay. Cat daddy. Cat, cat, cat daddy. It's, it's a cat daddy, right? So basically the main, the second, okay, so the I think the main source of Islamic hadith, number one, was Aisha. Um, saying Muhammad said this, Muhammad said that. She was very clever with it. She could just kept on remembering what Muhammad said every time she want, needed something politically, right? But the second source was Abu Huraira, who was nicknamed Abu Huraira, the father of cats, because he loved cats. And some people joke about maybe this is why Islam is so anti-dog, because Abu Huraira was so in love with cats that he kept on saying that he kept on making up hadith that Muhammad hated dogs because he was taking the cat side in the, you know, cat versus dog battle. I don't know, maybe like, but that's a joke. Um, but yeah, so cats are apparently very precious in Islam. Um, I mean, we, I don't know if it is actually according to Muhammad or Abu Huraira made that up. Um, another thing well, I have to mention- All I know is that from now on, we will only refer to Abu Huraira as cat daddy. Cat daddy, yes. <laughs> one, okay, one last thing I want to mention, okay? Mm -hmm. I think this is great. I think this is great. Like, I think if you want to make Islam disappear faster than anything else, the best way to make that is not that the best way to make more people realize that Islam is a bad idea is not mm -hmm. to argue that Islam is anti-woman. It's not to argue that Islam is anti-gay, anti-trans, anti-science, um, anti-skepticism. No, no, no. None of that will get you more people mobilized against Islam than to show the world that Islam is against dogs. Okay? True. That, that, will, that will mobilize the whole world against Islam. Okay? So in the battle of dog versus Islam, I think dogs will win. I mean, how could you not love dogs? Okay, so yes, I think I think this is good. Be anti-dog as much as you can, please, please be against dogs because people love dogs. Okay, and this is just going to work in our favor. Well, I mean, there are a few things as successful as um, destroying the faith of Muslims as the Islamic Republic of Iran. So I think that they're just accelerating that even further. <laughs> <laughs> Ghostman is saying, Susanna, why did you have us clap for this news? This is not clappable news. <laughs> Bonophobia. <laughs> okay, I have good news. I have good news. This was only introduced to the parliament. Okay, this has not been approved. This has not been, it's not scheduled to be enacted. Okay, this is just a potential at the moment. It's just and a the outrage. It's a potential. And the, guys, I must, I'm happy to report to you that the outrage to this in Iran have been massive. People are like, and, and you know what? One of the most favorite arguments for why this bill is a bad idea is that the pandemic has made us sad. We need this. Oh. We need this. You, that's what the main people are saying. People are saying like, we don't, we don't get out. We're, we're sad. 
and we need we you, you're taking our main source of emotional support away from us that has been one of the favorite arguments and is yeah it's it might work i mean oh. the outrage has been so big that um they might back down we'll see if hey I if wonder... they back down can we come back and report that they back down um that would be good news yeah uh if if that okay. comes on to my radar i wonder yeah. if they would still ban dog ownership if um you you're blind like they have seen eye dogs right like yeah they're dogs? against they're, well i mean they I, i'm pretty sure they would allow that they're against uh pets um okay. as dogs right so uh, islam for example allows having dogs for guards as, as you know you can't have them in the house right like you can't have guard dogs you can you just can't have pet dogs okay yeah hey guys if you're a fan of blasphemy and sexy cali you know like me then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter link in the description below because if you subscribe we will send you a free copy of our blasphemous art ebook and let me tell you it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today and we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week so make sure to subscribe link in the description below